I've gotten a lot of requests for this pattern. So I happen to have two separate orders. One of them is asking for a holographic. One of them is asking for a standard. So we're going to paint both. I'm going to do a run. It's a mini run. It's two baits. But this is going to be the red discus. Pretty much all we have to do in this one is to just grab scissors and get this taped off. The other one comes pre-taped sort of, but I'm going to show you something that I want you guys to take note of. And it's something worth, if you're a stickler like me, and I always preach to have the cleanest lines and bills paint free that you guys can possibly have for whatever it is you're doing. Just turn over that professional looking lure to your client, your customer, and it's, it's really going to speak volumes about your work and what kind of an artist you are as a lure maker. So finishing this, we'll go ahead and trim that in a little bit. But if you look at this and you look at it fairly close up, you can see that this blue cellophane here, it doesn't cover into the cracks and crevices. And that's going to translate onto the bill in paint. Um, and it's going to look just, I think it looks messy. So normally what I'll do is I'll just take a little pair of scissors and cut that away and then retape. And that's it. This is on there for a reason. It's not like they do it for no reason. It's on there when they pre-foil this. And of course, if you guys know your blanks, you know that this came from Dinger. So let's get started. Let's make something cool today. If you guys are into any sort of freshwater reference books at all or salt water or anything along those lines, if you guys keep cichlids or you have aquariums in your home or you're just an avid lure painter like me, Dr. Axelrod needs to be your best friend. A younger version of me worked in pet stores and aquariums, oh, probably my early 20s, and I became extremely familiar with not only uh, Doc Ax Axelrod's books, but a bunch of other ones, and I used to just pour through them. I bought a few of them. This is one of my favorites because I used to keep both Amazon Basin and African cichlids. I had a freshwater tank, I've had several saltwater tanks, and just over the years, I've really familiarized myself with these cichlid books. This is a pretty big one, and you can probably get most of the pictures online, but I just, there's something about referencing, that dogs have chewed the binding <laughs> off of this. Um, there's something about referencing books that just, it just makes me happy. So, the Amazon Basin is full of discus, and there are several, and usually they start out up towards the front. Uh, because they're relatively easy to get a hold of, but I know that there's an entire book or a section on these guys in the back. And you usually find them close to angelfish, however, they are not related directly to angelfish. They're both semi aggressive cichlids, uh, they like a low pH, and they're usually found in what's called dark water or black water or water where there's just a lot of sunken timber and there's tannins in the water. So, discus, probably discovered in 1831, and today we're going to be doing a red discus. Now the closest I think we're going to get in this book is the brown. But one thing that is synonymous with most discus are the bars that run vertically on these fish. You can see them prominently here and the browns. But it's true, that almost looks like sheep's head or convicts. Uh, they're they're uh, <laughs> the saltwater fish that have the bars in them. And this is a green. We're going to be doing a red. So let's give you guys that picture right now. 
So right off the bat, there's a couple of differences in how we're going to approach these, uh, one being pre-foiled and one being plain. The plain one is going to get a white primer base on it. The foiled one is not going to get anything at all on it except for I'm probably going to lay in a little bit of white primer to cover where this foil stops. It just gives a, a smoother blend when you get your, your base coats and your layers on here. So that's all we're going to do, but this is going to get entirely coated in white. This, just the bottom and the top, not the face. You, you Maybe a little bit in the eyes. But you really want this, because we do use a mesh on this, we're going to be using this particular type of mesh on this pattern, and you really want to see that holographic. Um, I generally, because it's more expensive for me to purchase, I generally charge a little bit more for the pre-foiled holographic baits. And just to real quick uh, describe what the holographic is, it's anything that shows a bit of a prism on it. It gives you that flash and foil. That's, that's what you'll generally see when you're looking for blanks as a holographic. Now this particular strain of red discus is the Allenker red discus or Symphysodon aquafasciatus. Say that five times fast. There are multiple different types of red. There's the pigeon bloods, there's the panda red, there's just, there's tons of them. But for this one, what I normally paint is the Allenker red, red discus. And that's spelled A-L-E-N-Q-U-E-R red discus. I have spared you guys clicking the fast forward button and I put the mesh on already and all we're going to do is prime it and now that the mesh is on I'm still going to follow the same principle because you really on this holographic on the pre-foiled you really want that to, to show through so we're going to use lighter layers and what you're looking at is that light yellow in the center of this fish, red at the edges, some beautiful, beautiful, I'm going to be using Maui blue and some metallic blue in here. Obviously you're going to see the black bars. And we just need to work the top and the bottom of this for the pre-foiled. Just run that completely through get in and around as best you can and there we have it and then just continue on I should be able to knock the primer out with this we'll put in about half of a cup full here of white this opaque white and there's the dog barking at the mail okay should be better he should be out of sight out of mind for rascal you never know though he might just start barking for the heck of it so I've been gone three and a half, almost four weeks. I've got tons of footage, lots of content. From there, I went and spe spent a week with my mom. And then from there, I went back up to Maryland, hopped on a flight with my cousin Christine and my uncle Frank. And we went to Disney for a week. And then the last couple of days that I was in uh, back on the East Coast, I had the unique privilege of interviewing a woman from the Justice Arts Coalition who specifically deals with incarcerated individuals and the arts and healing through the arts and it was it was pretty it was eye-opening it was very profound uh, I learned quite a bit and I'm really happy to be able to put that together so that's going to be a very long edit project but um, we do what we can and whether that's uh, through Christian missions or through the arts we, we try and heal, even if somebody has sinned. So, something to remember. Now, one of the interesting things about this particular situation, having a pre-foiled and a standard uh, of these Dinger wide lip square bills, is that um, the prism is going to act as some of the veining in the discus. You'll notice in the red discus there's a lot of really flashy blues around the edges and we're going to strain that through and I'm going to achieve that effect with the prism with the prefoil on this one and on this one I really want that to be blue. So what I'm going to do as my whole body shakes as I do that, uh, I'm going to add some Maui. 
and I'm going to add that right down the middle through the entire face and right down the middle and yeah I'm blasting it it's it's okay for basics it doesn't matter if I blast the paint on or not so I'm running around 40 psi super high super super high but it uh, it spreads a lot of paint in a very short period of time and when you're doing runs you just I learned to work with that so on the foiled bait I'm gonna do that up there down here it will change the the structure of the pattern just a little bit but you'll understand where I'm going with that as we go along and then maybe just stay consistent with that on the face there we go we're giving this a quick heat set I spared you guys from fast forwarding again I've got this one meshed now this is our standard one extra step on this because I did the sides on this blue I'm gonna come back now that the mesh is on put a little bit more white over it simply because I want the, uh, the colors to be as accurate and true as they can. And I want that blue underneath. I want that vein to come out once this mesh is off. But I didn't want it everywhere. Just right down the middle. And, and it kind of goes to show you that you can take a couple of different approaches to the same type of a situation same type of pattern and achieve really cool things a little bit differently each time but I'm just showing you the differences between how I approach a foiled bait with this pattern and how I approach a standard bait the next thing we're going to be doing is adding transparent bright yellow into the center of this and then working our way out with the edges in an orangish red probably a sunset orange so now we're coming back over the blue back over the white that we just put back down and I'm adding yellow now we are going to add yellow to the um, the prefoil because now this bait is caught up to where we are with this one and we want this real light on this because again you don't want to lose all that holographic property to it a lot of people get confused when you talk about holographic they think you're going to get a little pop-up of obi-wan kenobi from star wars and it's, it's not at all it's just a pre-foiled bait it's my star wars joke of the day haha -ha. <laughs> all right now we've got our yellow but you can still see that pre-foil I don't have a whole lot of this left so now we can just start I don't have to clean the chamber out anymore I really like to clean the chambers out when I have an opaque color in there or a dark color like the blue I'm gonna add a little bit of sunset red which is a pretty dark orange just a quick just to make sure I don't have any separation I've been gone for a while I usually mix and shake the paints really really well before I go and I did check them yesterday um, I don't temperature control my workspace when I'm gone for such a long period of time the um, the roof is insulated and it's the garage is a double line now didn't used to be so pretty or the garage door rather well, pretty much the whole garage don't get brass tacks going so you can see that I'm kind of blending to the outside and then we're going to come over that and we're going to blend to the outside again with red because there is quite a bit of red in this pattern but you really want to you want to stay true to the 
pattern as best you can. The only difference is because I, I have a foiled bait and I want to really showcase the foil, I have to do the blue a little differently on this. So I'm not going to be as prominent. We're not going to do the top. I hope that makes sense what I just said. Basically, on a pre-foiled bait where you really want to show off that prism, you kind of have to adapt and figure out how to put your colors in as well as you can. And if we would have just come and loaded blue in the center of this, that, that holographic property, the foil property, completely disappear. Same as if we put white primer down. Can't do either of those things if you want to stay true to the foil properties. I did just a little bit, clean that out, which is fine. Now we're going into a transparent bright red. This is a Chicard. I like this. It's super light. It's almost like it's, it's, um, it's already been reduced. You can see as I hit an angle right here, what that really does to that blue. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but I'll show it again once this is completely done. And we'll do it at the edges here as well. It's almost like angling down across the bottom. It just gives you this really cool technique. bit there. Really like how that is coming along. And then we'll do the same thing here. We're gonna kind of redirect. We're gonna hit this head on. We can't do that on the other because the blue's there. We're gonna hit this red head on on this one. But you still want to be able to see the orange in the transition. Yep. Some of you are probably would it, would it have mattered if we put the orange on at all because if you have a wet blend, that yellow is going to bring orange into the red anyways. You're right. Let's, one more step. And I just I want to try and be thorough. All right, now we're starting to look similar. Between this and this, obviously the foil is going to make the yellow look darker on this bait, but we are starting to look a little bit more similar now. Big difference is that you can see some of that really cool blue property in this. And that is Maui blue, folks, if you are of the Createx persuasion. If it's wicked, then it's a little bit different. Um, pretty much, you just want to look at the shade darker than sky blue, lighter than bright blue. Now, I am going to bring some sky blue into this. This is opaque sky. And while that's still wet, make sure you always get the goo off of here. Again, I've been away for a little bit, so just a couple of drops should do it. Now is when, as we start to lay in the detail, I'm going to bring this down from blasting it, because you don't need to blast it anymore. That's down to about 10. So we've taken it down 30 PSI. And give this a little blue nose. A little blue tip here on the tail. Maybe just a little bit of splatter. Once your pressure is lower, you can splatter a little bit. And uh, especially with your thicker paints, I wanted to get a little splatter around the eyes. Just flicking it. A little bit more on the nose. A little bit on the tail. All the same. Now remember, when we uncover this one, there's a bunch of blue underneath this mesh that should, hopefully if I've done my job right, 
it should be fairly prominent. I'm going to do under the chin here as well, under this bill. And then I'm going to do just a little bit up top. Maybe just, but again, I've got plenty of blue here. I don't really see that I'll need a whole lot. Just add some, some more blue dotting. See how that's coming out. Looks pretty cool. I've loaded one of my absolute favorite detailers. It's this 0075 Detail Black Magenta. It's from the Wicked line. I love detailing with that as opposed to black. I've got my pressure up around 25. And this is this can get a little tricky. You have to practice a couple of different things. You have to practice kind of being close to your bait but you also have to, to practice your trigger control so if you want to get the lines right you know I always preach practice until you get it right so just come down or you could even hold it like this and just practice making lines and the closer you are the thinner your lines are gonna be just make sure you're not running real thick because that's too much pressure you pull all the way back you're going to get a big one but if you start with just an, and make sure the splatter's off too <laughs> um, so just push air okay get in close and gradually pull back and come down and it doesn't have to be 100 percent straight line but just move down like this and again make sure there's no junk in the nozzle head and you're going to do this with the mesh on get them a little bit darker and there you go now you have your discus lines that are always 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 there when you have a discus do the same thing on the other side start right there at that ear flap then your next one should be right at the back of that gill plate and that's the cool thing about these little dinger wide lip square bills is that they give you a pretty good way to do that and then by the time you're on the second one your consistency should be there with how far they are and if you start to just feel air coming out then spray it at a little bit higher pressure just to get that out and then just come back over it And there you have it. Now we're going to darken the eyes just a little bit. And then we're going to move on to blast this a little bit, get that paint flowing. There it is. Back to 25 and just do the same thing getting close try and gauge can eyeball this about the same distance I have a little bit better paint flow now so I don't think I'm going to need to come back on this one and again, this is our holographic bait, so we want to be a little bit lighter of a touch on this anyways. Because we want that foil to show through. And, and it will.
There we go. Now we have our discus stripes. While I realize this is a crappy picture and you guys are looking at a much better one, notice how prominent these are. Also, most discus have red eyes. And there is a black, almost like a raccoon stripe down the front on the face. So I think that we have gotten pretty close in achieving that this morning. Pretty stoked about that. Now we just need to take the mesh off and put some eyes on. Here are our colors for the day. We started with the opaque white base, but not on the prefoil, just the top and the bottom on the prefoil because we really want that foil to come through. We did some yellow, we did some Maui blue, we've got red, opaque sky on the face and sprinkled through, detailed the stripes with black magenta because if you notice, these are not that dark. And on the picture that you guys are seeing right up there, it's not that dark. So yeah, this is a whole nother spray session. McClanahan, you're up next. You want, you want to see what it looks like? Yeah, so I didn't bore you with putting the mesh on. The mesh has definitely done its job on these. Um, the only thing that I want to try and make sure you guys are good with is that putting it on as tight as you can is going to allow you to... Oh, look at that. Sorry, I lost my track of thought. That's just so pretty. Um, wow, that prism really did well on the veining and look at the blue underneath oh my goodness haha <laughs> couldn't ask for better that looks pretty killer all right let's get some eyes on it before i drool all over my baits as i mentioned before most discus if not all have got red eyes don't take my word for it go fact check me go look at all the pictures check out dr axelrod but they do um so save yourself the trouble. The thing is, there's a couple ways that I could do this. I like the bigger ones on these dingers because they seem to have a bit wider of an eye socket. My biggest hope, yes, good. I was afraid that a lot of times if I'm away from my super glue for any particular length of time it has a tendency to harden and I did not replenish my supply like I normally do because I just I wasn't thinking but we're good I always super glue the eyes in folks always super glue the eyes in I think that'll do so this is the foiled one and you can bring this down so that you can really see that holographic foil doing its job and we can't achieve that with a standard but what I did do was achieve at least a part of a prism or a contrasting color through that gorgeous Maui blue folks that's that's pretty awesome if I do say so myself. I love these patterns. I like doing off the wall stuff. You guys know that by now if you have spent any length of time on this channel. These, I'm going to put this real bright, bright red eye on here. Just because that's how I want to roll with this one. And we're going to have these pupils pointed backwards just so that it's interpreted as a scared look whether it does or does not have an effect on how the bass or whatever it is you guys are going to chase around with this um, I think every little bit helps though so there is our standard version with the bright red and then here is our foiled version and there's that blue streaked in the middle definitely the look we wanted to achieve a little blue on the bottom and that folks 
is how you paint the red discus. But I want to see what you guys interpret. Show me what you guys can do with this bait. Love to see it. I hope that I've been able to teach you a couple of things today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for spending some time on the channel. Boy, oh boy, it's good to be back. Boy, oh boy, it's good to be back. I love doing spray sessions for you guys. And I've got so much content from the road. It's going to take me a while to get all that stuff uploaded. Uh, simply because there's, there's just so much to, to sift through. But in the meantime, enjoy this red discus spray session. Thanks for hanging out. Peace, love, and uh, Camaros. I don't know. It's just the first word that came to mind. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video. Happy casting. This mesh has done its job. The only thing, and I didn't show you me putting the, the mesh on. It's, apparently, I'm having a problem getting it off. For three weeks, almost four weeks, almost gone a month. All right, hang on. When he stops barking. Oh. I'm back in the saddle again.